Hey, this is Elijah with the Oxygen Team, and in this video, I'm gonna give you a quick overview of the basic elements in Oxygen. Now, to get to our elements, we just click the Add button at the top left of the builder, and here is the Basics category. And within this category, we have a couple of subcategories, containers, text, links, and visual. We'll start with containers. Let's throw a section in here. Now, sections are a special container that constrain your content to the widths that you've set up in Oxygen's global settings. They also inherit a global padding setting. So sections are kind of a convenient way to have consistent spacing and width throughout your design. And generally, when working with Oxygen, you'll want to use sections as kind of your main building block. Now, sections have some controls here in the primary tab. You can change the text color, the background color, the child element layout using our Flexbox layout engine, horizontal item alignment, and you can change the HTML tag. You can also add shape dividers to sections. So let's go over here and just add some bottom padding to the section first so that we can see our shape divider clearly, and then we'll click add shape divider. Now shape divider is an SVG shape that allows you to transition between sections or break up your design a little bit with some interesting shapes. We have over 30 built-in SVG shapes. You can also paste in your own custom SVGs. You can change the color of the shape. You can change the position top and bottom. You can flip it horizontally. You can change the height, the width. You can center it horizontally and you can manipulate the Z index because we allow you to put an unlimited number of shape dividers in each section. So you can use the Z index to get really interesting layering effects in combination with color and opacity. Let's get rid of this shape divider and we'll move on to the next container, which is the div. So a div is just a basic block. It's used to subdivide your layouts. So if for instance, we have a section where all the content is running uh, horizontally and we want some of the content to run vertically, we could create a div, set it to stack all the child elements vertically, and then any elements within that div would then stack vertically instead of horizontally. And you can use this to set up, for instance, columns uh, where you have two side-by-side -side divs, but within each div, their individual content runs vertically. Divs also have much the same controls as sections with width, background color, tag, and layout, but they do not inherit the global padding and page width like sections do. Now on to the next container, which is the columns element. The columns element is basically a helper that allows you to quickly build column layouts using our Flexbox engine. So when you add a columns element, you can choose from 50-50, 33, 33, 33, etc. Uh, you pick your number of columns, click it, and it'll drop in that number of divs that will be equally spaced through the width of your columns element. Now you're not restricted to that number of columns. We can just select a div here and duplicate it to add say a fifth column instead of sticking with the four. And that new div will have its width calculated. And that's kind of the magic of the columns element. Now in the primary tab, you also have stack columns vertically at a specific breakpoint. You can set it to reverse the column order at a specific breakpoint. You can set it to set column width to 50% at a specific breakpoint, and you can set the background color. Let's move on to our text elements here, the first of which is the heading element. So if we drop a heading in, we have controls to set its font family, text color, font size, font weight, and we can set its tag H1 through H6. Moving on, our next text element is the text element, which is just a basic text element, you can set the font family, text color, font size, font weight, and HTML tag. Let's get rid of this and look at the next text element, which is a little bit different. This is the rich text element. It has the same controls as our normal text elements, but when we double click to edit it, we're going to get an editor that looks a lot like what you're used to in WordPress uh, before Gutenberg took over the editing process. And just like with the rich text element, all of our text elements, for instance, a heading, can be edited by simply double-clicking it, 
typing your change, and then clicking away from the element, and that'll lock that change in. So let's get rid of this text element, and let's move on to the next subcategory, which is our link elements. So we'll start with the text link here. And a text link is simply a link. Uh, you can set the URL, you can click the set button and set it to open in a new tab, uh, or you can search for existing content to add the link to that content or paste in the URL. You can also control the font family, text color, hover color, font size, font weight, and whether the link text is underlined or not. Now let's get rid of that and move on to the link wrapper. Now this is essentially the same thing as a text link except for it's a blank container. So the reason you would use this is if you wanted some element or group of elements to be a link, you would put them all inside of a link wrapper. For instance, we could drop in uh, an image element and that whole image would now be clickable because it's inside the link wrapper. Now if we choose the link wrapper, we can set the URL. We can also control the layout like with other containers. You can set the width and the background color as well. Now let's get rid of that and we'll move on to the button element, which is just a helper to help you drop in a quick button. You can build buttons with the link wrapper element. For instance, if you want an icon and text, you might want to do it that way. But if you just need a simple button, this is much, much quicker. We can change the URL just like with the other link elements. We can also change the button style between solid and outline. We can change the button size, button color, button hover color, text color, text size, font family, and font weight. Let's delete that, and let's take a look at the next subcategory. Now we're on to our visual category. So we'll start with an image element, which we've already seen briefly. Let's drop that in and we'll look at the controls. We can paste in the URL to an image or click browse to either upload an image or choose an already uploaded image from the media library. This should look familiar to you if you're used to dealing with media in WordPress. Now we also have the width, height, and alt text settings in addition to the media library option, which lets us choose an image from the media library and allows us to use things like source set, the image sizes that are defined in our WordPress install, and the alt text from the media library will be pulled in for images chosen using the media library option. Now let's delete the text element and we'll move on to the next visual element, which is the video element. Now this is basically just a video embed that lets you paste in the YouTube or Vimeo URL that you'd like to embed on your site. You can also choose the video aspect ratio or you can manually paste in an iframe code if you'd like to use a bit more customization. Now let's close that out and move on to the icon element. Oxygen comes with two icon sets, font awesome and linear icons, which you can select from. You can also upload your own custom SVG icon sets, which will become available in the icon set dropdown. You can set the icon style between outline solid or none, the color of the icon, icon size, and of course you can choose the icon from the icon set you have selected. Let's delete that and we'll move on to the final element in the basic category, which is the code block. A code block allows you to put in your own custom PHP, HTML, CSS, or JavaScript into the builder. You can choose the HTML tag for it, and then you can jump into each individual editor. There's some PHP. We can go back to the primary tab, and we can go to the CSS editor, and we can type in whatever CSS we'd like here. And we can go back to the primary tab again and go to the JavaScript tab where we can type in whatever kind of JavaScript we might need. The code block is really, really powerful if you know how to code a little bit of PHP, HTML, CSS, or JavaScript. And if there's not an element to accomplish what you want within Oxygen, then most of the time you can build whatever you need using a code block. So this is Elijah with the Oxygen team, and that's an overview of the basic elements in Oxygen. Thank you for watching.